Before we jump into today's build, just a quick heads up, there is currently a 50% discount running on Codrip Pro. You can use the coupon code in the description or the direct link to get half of your first billing period. That brings the early plan down to just $15. So if you have been thinking about joining Pro, now is a pretty good time. Alright, for today's video, we are revisiting this incredible website that was featured as site of the day on our watch back in July. We have already rebuilt a couple of animations from this site like this scroll powered image rebuilds using masks and the spotlight style image gallery we have covered a few weeks ago. But there was one more interaction on that site that really stood out, this bold marquee style text animation where oversized words slide in from the sides, revealing each letter in a staggered flow. It's clean and minimal, and it's one of the few effects we haven't explored yet on the channel. So I spent some time recreating it from scratch and managed to recreate a similar text animation concept using GSAP. In today's video, I'll walk you through exactly how to set it up, how to structure the elements, split the text into characters with split text, and then bring it to life with scroll powered animations driven by scroll trigger. If you find these kinds of rebels helpful, make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you'd like to access the source code for this project, plus hundreds of other similar micro projects and a brand new website template every month, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's get into the code. Let's start with the HTML. First, I'm creating two simple sections, one at the top with the class intro and another at the bottom with the class outro. These give the page a bit of vertical structure and they also help us bookend the scroll animation with some breathing room. Inside each one, I'm just dropping a heading in H1 tag with some placeholder text, just so the page doesn't feel empty when we are scrolling through. Next, I'm adding a section with the class animated titles. This is the main wrapper for all of our animated text blocks. Inside this section, I am adding three divs, each with the class title. These represent the individual slides or phrases of our scroll animation. Inside each one, there is another div called title container. This is the element we'll animate horizontally, sliding it from the side as we scroll. It also helps us isolate the motion from the actual text so we can have a clean transform target. And finally, inside each container, I've added an H1 with some placeholder phrases. These are the large text elements that will break into individual characters using split text. And each letter will animate into place as we scroll through the section. That's it for the HTML. We have got our scroll structure, a container for animated titles, and three full screen blocks, each holding a bold headline. Let's move on to the CSS and start styling everything. First, I've already imported the Mandro font from Google Fonts. It's a modern, sensory font that works really well for large text treatments like this one. Right after that, I've defined a few root level color variables. We have got a light background tone, a dark foreground for the text, and a soft neon accent. These will keep the design consistent across the entire scroll experience. Now let's start with some global resets. We'll remove default margins and padding from all elements and use border box sizing so widths and heights are always predictable. This gives us a nice clean slate to work from. Next, I'm setting the base styles for the body. We are using Mandrop as the main font across the entire page with a soft off-white background and dark text color pulled from our variables. For the headings, I'm making them big and bold. They are extra large in size, medium weight, with tight line height and slightly negative letter spacing. This gives them that strong, compact look we want for the scroll animation. Now let's set the base layout for our sections. Every section is positioned relative, spans the full width of the viewport and hides any overflow. This makes sure that any moving element don't spill outside their bounds. For the intro and outro sections, the ones that frame our scroll, I'm giving them full screen height and centering the text in the middle vertically and horizontally. Now for the animated titles, each title block gets most of the screen height and inside it, we are centering the content vertically with flexbox. This makes sure the headline always sits comfortably in the middle of the screen. Then inside each one, we have the title container. This is the part we'll animate side to side later using GSAP. It's set up with full width, relative positioning and centered alignment both ways. And we are marking it with will change transform, which helps the browser optimize performance during heavy animation. For the background colors, I am alternating them using nth child selectors. The first and third titles get the accent color, while the middle one keeps the neutral background. This creates a soft rhythm as we scroll between phrases. Now let's define the character class. This one is not in the HTML directly, but it gets applied automatically by split text. 
when we split each heading into individual characters. Each character is absolutely critical to the animation, so we are setting it as inline block with relative positioning and again using build change transform so it animates smoothly when we move it in from above or below. Finally, we are adding a media query to make the layout more responsive. Below 1000 pixels wide, the heading size drops down and we reset the letter spacing to zero. This keeps the titles readable on smaller screens without losing the effect. Now it's time to bring it all to life with JavaScript. At the very top, I have imported the libraries we'll need for this build. First is GSAP which powers all the animations. Then I'm importing scroll trigger, which allows us to sync those animations to the user's scroll position. After that, I'm bringing in split text, a GSAP utility that breaks text into characters, words or lines, which is exactly what we need for this animation. And finally, I'm importing Lenis, a lightweight, high performance, smooth scrolling library that we have used in a bunch of past projects too. Once the page loads, Everything runs inside a DOM content loaded listener that just makes sure all the HTML is fully loaded before we start manipulating elements. Inside it, the first step is to register the GSAP plugins. So we are telling GSAP to activate both scroll trigger and split text. This step is required anytime you are working with GSAP's extended plugin features. Next, I am setting up smooth scrolling using Lenis. This part is pretty much a copy paste from the official Lenis documentation, which is what I usually do in these videos. Basically, we are creating a new Lenis instance, then telling it to notify scroll trigger every time the user scrolls. That way, even though we are over adding native scroll behavior, scroll trigger stays in sync with the actual scroll position. At this point, we have got the full foundation in place, GSAP is active, scroll trigger is ready to sync animations to scroll, split text is ready to split the headings, and Lenis is powering smooth scroll behavior across the page. Next, we'll move on to grabbing the text elements, splitting them into characters, and setting up their initial animation state. First, I'm grabbing all the h1 elements inside our title sections. These are the large text blocks we added earlier in the HTML. I'm using GSAP's two array utility to turn that node list into a clean, iterable array that makes it easier to loop through and process each one individually. Right after that, I'm creating an empty array called splits. This will hold all of our split text instances so we can reference them later during the animation phase. Then, I'm looping through each element in the list. For every heading, I'm applying split text to break the content into individual characters. I am specifying the type as characters so each letter becomes its own span and I am assigning a class called character to every one of them that will apply the styling properties to each character we defined earlier in CSS. Once the heading is split, I am storing the result into splits array. This way, we can access each character set later when we animate them. Now here is where the animation prep begins. For each character inside the split heading, I am setting its starting Y position using GSAP's set function to create a subtle wave-like motion. I am alternating the starting of set. Every even indexed character starts a little bit above its default position and every odd indexed character starts below. That alternating pattern is what gives the animation its staggered floating feel as the letters settle into view during scroll. So at this point, we have selected the headings, split them into individual letters, and set each one slightly off position, ready to animate into place when triggered. The very last step in this block is grabbing all of the title sections themselves. We'll use this as our scroll triggers, so as each one enters the viewport, we'll animate the corresponding characters in the container. Next, we'll start building the scroll trigger logic that drives the animation based on scroll position. Now that we have prepared all the characters, let's create the scroll powered animation that brings everything to life. I am looping through each title section using for each, and for each one, we are building a scroll trigger instance. First, I am selecting the title container inside the current title. This is the element we'll animate horizontally as the user scrolls. Then, I am setting an initial X offset for the container. If it's the middle title, meaning index 1, I'll shift it from the left by 100%. Otherwise, I'll shift it in from the right. This creates a nice directional contrast, so not all headings animate in the same way. After that, I'm grabbing the split for this specific title, which gives us access to all of its characters and storing the total number of characters in a variable called character count. Now we are ready to set up the scroll trigger. We'll tell it which element to track, in this case, the current title block and define the scroll range. The animation starts when the top of the title enters the bottom of the viewport and ends when the top ridge is slightly above the top of the screen. This gives us a nice long scroll zone to work with. I have enabled scrub so the animation is fully tied to scroll. As you move, the animation responds immediately to your position. Everything else happens inside the onUpdate callback which runs continuously as you scroll through this section. Let's break it down. 
First, we calculate how far the title container should be shifted. We take its initial offset, either plus 100 or minus 100, and reduce that value as the scroll progresses. At the start, it's fully off to the side. At the end, it's perfectly centered. This creates that smooth marquee slide-in effect where the whole container drifts horizontally into view. Now for the fun part, animating each individual letter. We loop through all the characters in the heading and figure out what order they should animate in. For most titles, we go from left to right, but for the middle one, index one, we reverse it right to left. This gives us even more variation and a bit of visual rhythm. Next, we calculate the stagger delay for each character. We start with a base delay, a little buffer before anything animates. Then we spread out the remaining scroll progress across all the characters. This way, the animation doesn't happen all at once. Each letter enters at a slightly different time as you scroll. To do this, we use a few simple values. Character start delay is the buffer at the beginning. Character timeline span is how much scroll is left after that. Stagger factor controls how spaced out the animation is. Each character gets a slightly different delay and duration based on its position in the list. This part of the math might look a bit tense in the code, but all it's doing is calculating when each letter should start and finish animating based on how far into the scroll we are. Now we calculate the actual progress for each letter. If we haven't reached its delay yet, the character stays as is. If we are past it, we compute how far into its animation we are, clamping that value so it never goes beyond the full reveal. Then we move each character vertically, starting from its initial Y offset, either above or below, and easing it back to zero as the scroll progresses. This is what creates that subtle wave motion as each letter settles into place at slightly different times depending on the scroll and its position in the word. So by the end of this scroll trigger block, we have got a synchronized scroll animation where the full title container slides in horizontally and the individual characters animate vertically in a smooth staggered sequence. That wraps up the JavaScript. The text animation is fully working. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.